Greetings my fellow Monkey Brains, you're on the Electric Monkey Brain channel. Today I'm going to show you how to increase the voltage of your Tesla coil for the same amount of input power. If you don't know what a Tesla coil is or you're interested in this circuit, I posted it in a previous video which I'll link above or below. By the way, if you'd like to see other Tesla technology demonstrated and explained, please comment below and I'll see what I can do. So first, let's discuss the modes in which this Tesla coil resonates. Okay, so here I've drawn the diagram of my Tesla coil with one end connected to the earth and the other end open. Now the mode at which a Tesla coil resonates depends on what we call boundary conditions. The boundary conditions are that here one end is connected to the earth and the other end is open and free to do whatever it wants. So if I was to plot the voltage along the length of this Tesla coil, it would look something like this. Here where it's connected to the earth, the voltage will always be zero. And at the other end, the open end, the free end, the voltage is free to do whatever it wants and it simply oscillates between positive and negative. And you can see that this curve looks sort of like the, a quarter, one quarter of this full sine wave here. And that is why we call this mode the quarter wavelength mode, where lambda is the wavelength. Incidentally, you remember the annoying guy at school who was always vibrating the ruler from the end of the disc? Well, in that case, the ruler was also oscillating in the quarter wavelength mode because one end is fixed to the table and the other end is free to vibrate. Now, what would happen if we were to change the boundary conditions of this uh, Tesla core? and connect both ends to the earth. Well, if we were to connect both ends to the earth, then both ends would have zero volts. But if we were to drive it in the middle here at the resonant frequency, we could make it resonate and get a large voltage in the middle. And now if we were to plot the voltage, you would see something like this, which looks like half of a sine wave. And therefore we call this a half wavelength mode. Okay, so I've connected up the Tesla coil to our 24 volt power supply and the end of the wire here is just dangling and I have my earth connected screwdriver here which I'm going to touch on the end to draw some sparks. So we switch on at 24 volts and there's a tiny, tiny breakout of voltage at the end. I'm not sure if you can see that. We're just going to draw some sparks from this. Okay, it's a it's about one centimeter or less. And that's 900 milliamps that's pulling, that's about 21 watts. I'll try to zoom into the end to see more of the sparks. Okay, so an easy way to increase the voltage of your Tesla coil is simply to connect two Tesla coils in series, as I've drawn here. Obviously, for this to work, both Tesla coils have to have the same resonant frequency. But how is this thing going to oscillate? Well, we have to look at our boundary conditions. And here we have zero volts to the earth, and here this is open, so that will be maximum voltage. Well, what's going to happen in the middle here? Well, that's slightly difficult to work out. Unless we make an assumption, we can assume that the first coil is operating in a quarter wavelength mode. And then if we try to draw and plot the voltages along the lengths of the coils, we'll end up with something like this. Here's our quarter wavelength mode with zero volts at the earth, and it rises to a maximum at the end point. And then suddenly we know the voltage here, we know it's going to be maximum. So we know that we have a maximum voltage here because this is a quarter wavelength. And here we know there's a maximum voltage because it's an open end. And because of that, this has to be oscillating in a half wavelength mode. So if you stop and think about this, this is really the only combination in which this entire system can oscillate. One must be in the quarter wavelength mode and the other one must be in the half wavelength mode. Now it's possible that these two modes can be interchanged, but you have to have this type of combination if you think about it. So that means that our assumption at the beginning was valid. So let's put this together and see how it works on the bench. Okay, so I've connected my two identical Tesla coils in series. Here they're soldered together at the midpoint and here the open end is, is in the air. I have here my grounded screwdriver with which I'm going to draw sparks and you should always have a grounded screwdriver. So now we switch on the power supply. There's a small breakout at the end. 
Okay, now we're getting about two centimeters worth of sparking here, which is an extra centimeter, which is several thousand more volts. I'm not sure how much because it depends on the uh, humidity and temperature of the air. But the spark here is very, very, very purple. And it's quite quiet. That means if it's very, very purple, it means that it's pure voltage. By contrast, if I draw a spark now from the midpoint, you can see that that spark is much more white. And that's about one centimeter long and it's louder. That means there's more current at this point and more voltage at this point. So there you go, a simple way to increase the voltage of your Tesla coil for the same amount of input power. If you like this content, you can help by using the links below or simply subscribing. Thanks a lot. See you later.